Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving genetics. In previous videos, you should have learned how to set up and fill out Punnett squares, as well as what different patterns of inheritance look like. In this video, you will learn how to apply knowledge of incomplete dominance to Punnett squares. The image on this slide shows a Punnett square involving incomplete dominance. Setting up Punnett squares is about the same, but the interpretation of the results is different, and this will be the focus of this video. Instead of one trait covering up another for heterozygous individuals, incomplete dominance exhibits a blending of characteristics. The first example problem here reads, if tail length in cats is an incompletely dominant trait, what would the resulting offspring of a cross between a long-tailed cat, capital H, capital H, with a short-tailed cat, lowercase h, lowercase h, b. This is the simplest type of incomplete dominance problem as the genotypes for both parents are provided. The first thing that I would always do when trying to complete incomplete dominance problems is to write out the different allele combinations and the resulting phenotypes off to the side. Two of these different genotypes and phenotypes are given in the problem. Individuals with the genotype capital H, capital H have a long tail while individuals with the genotype lowercase h, lowercase h would have a short tail. Remember, in incompletely dominant traits, they show a blending of characteristics. As a result, individuals that are heterozygous would be halfway between short and long in length, what I have designated as medium in length. Now that we have determined what the different genotypes will produce in terms of phenotypes, we can set up and carry out the Punnett square just as we have for other sorts of problems. Step 1. Place the genotypes of the parents on the outside of the Punnett square as indicated in red. Step number two, fill out the Punnett square just as you have for previous examples. After filling out the Punnett square, the result is that 100% of the offspring would be heterozygous for this trait. Since you made a key before completing this problem, the interpretation of the results is pretty easy. All cats are heterozygous, so they would all have the intermediate trait. Using the key to the left, you'd see that they would all have medium length tails. The second problem reads, if flower color in orchids is an incompletely dominant trait, where homozygous individuals are blue or yellow in color, what would a cross between two green orchids produce? This problem is slightly more complex, as you need to do a little bit of work determining the genotypes and phenotypes of the parents. This problem suggests that individuals that are homozygous for traits are blue and yellow. For incompletely dominant problems, it doesn't matter which trait you represent with a capital letter or a lowercase letter since neither trait is actually dominant. In this case, I have chosen to represent yellow with two capital H's. Yellow is described as a homozygous trait, hence two of the same letter. Blue is also called homozygous, which I chose in this case to represent by two lowercase h's. Green is an intermediate color between blue and yellow, and is therefore represented as capital H, lowercase h. Now that we've set up a key for this problem, we can set up the Punnett square and try to answer the questions that are posed here. If you cross two green orchids, what would the resulting offspring be? Since the problem states that both parents are green flowered, I would start by referring to our key to determine what the genotype should be on the outside of this Punnett square. Green individuals would have the genotype capital H, lowercase h. The genotype capital H, lowercase h should be placed on the left-hand side and on the top of this Punnett square. Now that you've set up this Punnett square, fill it out just like normal. And after you've completed the Punnett square, you can try to interpret your results. You find the genotype lowercase h, lowercase h once in this Punnett square, in the bottom right-hand corner, as highlighted here. The genotype lowercase h, lowercase h, would be a blue flowered orchid. As a result, one quarter or 25% of the resulting flowers from a cross between two green orchids would be expected to be blue in color. You also find the genotype capital H, capital H once in this Punnett square in the top left hand corner. The genotype capital H, capital H would be a yellow flowered orchid. Again, as a result, one quarter of the offspring of these resulting flowers would expect it to be yellow colored. The remaining two squares of this Punnett square are heterozygous for the trait. Heterozygous individuals, using our key, would appear green in color. Two-fourths, or one-half of the offspring, in a cross between two green flowered orchids, as a result, would appear green in color. 
Putting all of this information together in a cross between two green flowered orchids, you could expect one quarter of the offspring to be blue flowered, one quarter of the offspring to be yellow flowered, and one half of the offspring to be green flowered in color. That is the end of this video overviewing incomplete dominance Punnett square practice problems. If you're interested in learning about any more topics involving genetics or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.